I've always wondered, why is every surface dwarf a merchant or a smith? You left out criminals and hired muscle. They don't count. We dwarves are drawn to shiny objects. Sort of like magpies, but with business sense. You're kidding. Of course I am. We come to the surface with the skills our ancestors had, Blondie. You think there's a tradition of dwarf woodcutters in Orzammar? Beekeepers? Sailors? Well, there could be mushroom growers and nut wranglers. Orzammar will never let those people go topside. Too vital. Also, embarrassing. Haha. <laughs> well, anyway. Welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Age 2. We have finally reached the point where we can go and do the Deep Roads Expedition. We've been building up to this for a while. I kind of unfortunately got a little screwed up in the past episodes. On account of forgetting that there were certain missions that had to be done before you could really continue on with the game. Now this does make sense. This is kind of an open world game. But, you know, for the story to make sense, everything can't be open. That would just screw everything up. Oh, look. This city way out there, too. I guess around the harbor. Ah, uh, Kirkwall's much bigger than they make it out to be in the game. Whatever. Who's Bartrand? So are you ready? It's a long trek. If you have any business you need to wrap up here, you'd better do it now. I'm ready. Let's get started. And let's not waste any more time. We've chosen one of the hidden entrances. The deep roads there will be nice and virginal, ready for a good deflowering. Ha! <laughs> now there's an interesting image. It'll take a week for us to get to the depth we need. There are bound to be leftover dark spawn from the blight. Big risks, big rewards. I didn't give up all that coin for nothing. Trust me, you will reap what you sow, partner. Now, before you... Wait! Who invited the old woman? I'm sorry to interrupt, Sir Dwarf. But I need to speak with my children. Mother! I told you not to get involved with this. I just want to know one thing. Are you planning on taking Bethany with you? I hadn't decided yet. Mother, I'll be fine. I want to go. It's not fine. You can't both go. What if something will happen to you? You, I understand, wanting to do this. But leave your sister here, I beg you. It's the Templars or the Darkspawn, Mother. At least I'm allowed to fight Darkspawn. Well, you're not going to be able to take everyone anyhow. You'll need to decide. Okay, we're going to have to make a decision about who we're going to bring. Varric has to come with us. He, that's not optional. All the other characters, though, we can choose. If you want to take Bethany, you can take Bethany, but, um... Eh, you know. How about, uh... Bethany and Anders here? No reason for that decision. None at all. Bethany, I beg you. Don't go. Don't do this. I'll be fine, Mother, I promise. This will work out for the best. You'll see. Personal drama over with? Now let's get underway. Been a long time coming, eh, brother? That it has. The deep roads await! No, this can't be right. The Champion and her apostate sister came to Kirkwall to spread subversion against the Chantry. But you claimed this wasn't the case. The Champion just happened to have dealings with the Canari, joined forces with a known raider, a blood mage, a rebel warden, and for what? Coin? Maybe it's not as simple as you imagine, Seeker. Simple? Do I need to remind you what your friend did? Do I need to tell you how many lives have been lost? How many more will be lost? You cannot sit there and tell me she is innocent! I don't know if innocent is the right word exactly. She must have known. 
Somehow the champion knew what was down there. That's why she wanted to join your expedition. No. None of us knew. If we had, she wouldn't have let her sister step foot into that blighted hole. Is that so? Then tell me your version of what happened on this expedition. Well, we entered the deep roads as planned, but we didn't get very far. There's been a collapse. The way forward is blocked. What? Is there some way around? Not that I've been able to find. The side passages are too dangerous. Useless! What am I paying you blighters for? Set camp! <laughs> Problems, brother? Sounding deep roads. Who knows how long it'll take to clear the path. Shall we not try to find a way around instead? Seems like the logical choice. You think I'm an idiot, Beric? The scouts say the side passages are too dangerous. See? This is why you bring someone like me along. We'll take a look. If we come running back, screaming, you'll know staying put was the right decision. Fine, fine! Find a way around. Just do it quickly. This is why I left the Wardens. I hate the blighted deep roads. Uh, I hate to add to your burdens, my friends, but I fear I must. I fear my boy Sandal wandered off. He's somewhere in those passages right now. I beg you, keep an eye out for him. He just doesn't understand danger like he should. One man out there alone. What are his chances? My boy is sturdier than you think. If he has one of his enchantments with him, he'll survive. He's burned down a house twice by accident. I'm more worried about him getting lost. Oh, my poor boy. When did you last see him? Not a half hour ago, I turned my back to hand out rations and he was gone. He gets so easily distracted. Oh, I should have been harsher with my warnings. We'll bring him back in one piece. Or maybe two. Hard to say, really. Poor Sandal. I can't believe he's done this. Let's move quickly, then. Enchantment? Okay, we are in the Deep Roads. Now, if you happen to just be stumbling upon this show by chance, and you don't, uh, you're not really familiar with the Dragon Age universe, or you haven't seen previous episodes of this to show the series or my uh, videos I'd done on the game Dragon Age Origins, I'll have a quick rundown of the Deep Roads. Deep Roads were constructed hundreds or thousands of years ago by the dwarves. That's uh, these little dudes like Varric. They um, were part of a gigantic underground kingdom of the dwarves that basically spread across well, it's not really revealed how big they are, but they're gigantic. Now, the deep roads that you go into back in the Dragon Age Origins were under Ferelden. These are under these are under the Free Marches, which is north of a kind of a, a bay or a, a sea. So, if they stretch out that far, and they're all, or should be at least, interconnected to each other. So, if... Uh, hold on. Well, now that that's over with, the 
deep roads are basically roads. They're interconnected sort of underground uh, tunnels that connected the various dwarven cities to each other. Dwarves are not, by their nature, surface-dwelling people. They live underground. And that is so ingrained in their society that dwarves that live underground are actually terrified of being above ground, thinking they're like going to fall into the sky or some ridiculous crap like that. So the dwarves, expanding their kingdoms, grew larger and larger, growing more and deeper and deeper uh, into the tunnels, making bigger, longer, longer tunnels, new and new cities, all that kind of crap. Well, that all sort of went to hell when the first flight started. Whatever caused it, the blight which started... Hold on, my microphone screwed up. The blight started around about a thousand years ago. The first one did, at least. Yeah. And it sort of had a bunch of these creatures called the Darkspawn that attacked. Now, the Darkspawn, when they grew in numbers, they basically took over the Deep Roads. Where they came from, that's uh, a matter for debate. But they were there, and they attacked so the... this is where Darkspawn come from, bastards. They attacked um, the humans on the surface in the various... Uh, in the Trevinter Empire, mostly. But they also attacked the dwarves. Now, the humans on the surface managed to get a sort of a... A respite from the whole situation when the first uh, archdemon was eventually killed after about a hundred years or so. The dwarves were not so lucky. While the humans were able to eventually escape to a certain degree from the darkspawn, because after the fall of the first archdemon Dumat, the darkspawn didn't really congregate on the surface in large numbers. They would occasionally breach the um, breach the underground and come up to the surface and like raid a village or something like that but for the most part darkspawn are not an enormous threat in between the blights so humans get away from the darkspawn for a period of time 50 years 100 years however long it takes between blights unfortunately for the dwarves they do not have that same advantage while the darkspawn only go onto the surface during lights mostly they live underground all the time and in fact the dwarves basically see a blight on the surface as being a good thing because the dark spawn swarm out from the deep roads and attack the surface which is the reason why we're here now now the blight ended oh shit check this thing out it just came out of nowhere <laughs> Oh shit. Okay, it's almost dead. Oh, and we won. But the uh, hawk went down. can't really have a, afford to have Hawk be injured. Was that worth it? I'm going to say no. <laughs> the Dark Spawn basically took up residence in the Deep Roads, and all but two of the Dwarven Kingdoms fell during Dark Spawn invasions. Or during after the dark spawn arrived, that resulted in the and the dwarves being hit much harder by the dark spawn uh, existence than the humans have, and it has probably changed their society quite significantly. Hey, look! Uh, now these things are the dark spawn. Now they have a basically a human appearance, and in fact, these are the human variation of the dark spawn.
and they are, um, well, the, the ones that you're probably going to end up running into the most. And give me a sec. Should have cut the camera. At the moment, the blight has just ended. Uh, this game, the beginning of this game, takes place during around about the same period in time as the um, as the first game, Dragon Age Origins. First game takes place over a period of time of about a year, and the first and this game I think takes place of like five or seven years or so. And the first part of it has um, has just ended, so. The Blight ended in Dragon Age Origins, and in this point in the game, the Blight has just ended. And the thought is that the Darkspawn haven't had enough time to retreat into the Deep Roads and repopulate it. Also, their numbers have been diminished by the war against uh, Ferelden. So, there aren't as many Darkspawn right now, so it's probably the safest time to flood into the, or go into the Deep Roads and try to seek out old Dwarven treasure. For the most part, the Darkspawn ignore all of that stuff because they don't care about gold or or anything like that. They're just monsters, pretty much. Well, I'll be a Nug's uncle. Isn't that Bodan's boy? Hello? He survived this entire time. I don't believe it. Are you responsible for all this? Boom. And how did you do that? Not enchantment. Smart boy. Come on. We still need to find a way past that collapse. Sandel is a character from uh, Dragon Age Origins. Followed the um, followed the hero of Ferelden, the character you play as in the first game around, pretty much along with his father. And they, they hang around in your camp and stuff. And they provide like shopkeeping service and enchantment. Sandel is sort of like a savant when it comes to enchantment. So you can enchant your weapons, enchant your armor, all that kind of crap. That's a thing about the dwarves. The dwarves have a hard time fitting in largely with the rest of society because, well, they are, I mean, aside from being shorter and stuff, their differences are more than they seem. They are not capable of magic, which also means that they have a higher resistance to things like lyrium, that crap we picked up over there, and they're capable of doing enchantments, things that other people... Uh, I'm not sure if humans or elves can do enchantments, but like lyrium is toxic to mages or maybe humans in general, and dwarves are capable of doing, with it, doing stuff about it. So this sort of weird magic was crafted by Sandel, a person who's not capable of magic at all, but he can work with the magical substances because it's not toxic to him. Now, he said this was not enchantment. I don't know how the hell he managed that. That's an ogre. <laughs> Looks like he was about to kill him before he froze it. Whatever. Good for the little guy. Enchantment? So, now, here we are. Uh, the deep roads... Oh! Oh, check it out! Golems! What is this thing? Who the hell wrote this? Okay, it wasn't written on the wall, I guess. I wasn't going to read through all of that on camera. A dark spawn up there. Here we have golems. These were creatures, magical creatures created by the non-magical dwarves, which are essentially 
dwarven souls that were ripped out of their bodies and and put into these stone creations as an ascent uh, basically an attempt to uh, create powerful soldiers and they actually worked golems are really powerful and they were used against the dark spawn but the dark spawn are freaking relentless if nothing else and they eventually overran the dwarves that had these things and golems and no golems they were defeated and the dwarves eventually actually lost the ability to make uh, lost the ability to make more golems so that was uh, kind of a downer for them never just one group, is it? Emissary! Some darkspawn are capable of magic, and the emissary... Emissary are among them. Okay, it's dead. Oh, there are more. Hey, we survived. Thought for sure at least one character was going down. Not sure why Darkspawn have gold, but whatever. Now there are different kinds of Darkspawn. For some reason, the ones that we've been running into now have been the Herlocks. I think that's how you pronounce their names. They are the human variation of the Darkspawn. They're also Genlocks, the elf or Genlocks of the Dwarven variation, which there are probably actually more of those than there are human versions. In, in the lore, at least. And then there are um, Shrieks, which are the elf, Elven variation, which actually look rather monstrous in comparison to the other, to the Genlocks and the Herlocks. And they're the Ogres. They are Kunari. Mages can be really powerful under the right circumstances. to see daylight again. Alrighty, there we go. The Shrieks are elves. Uh, the idea behind them being the versions of, like, elves, Quinari, human, whatever, isn't that they are actually those species how the dark spawn reproduces kind of weird what they do is they go and they capture a person a of that species or whatever and they go and they force them to sort of consume the the flesh of the um oh shit did i uh give me a second let me look at this Okay, yeah, I made a good choice. They force them to sort of consume darkspawn flesh, and that gives them a certain, like, darkspawn infection. Now, if they do this enough, they will eventually, eventually, uh, can I get through that door? 
they will eventually turn into these sort of monstrous versions of themselves. This is almost exclusively, it seems, done to females. And they go, they turn into something called a brood mother, which will then just sort of start reproducing darkspawn, darkspawn, darkspawn. Each one's capable of squatting out a thousand of them. Which is how the darkspawn exist in such huge numbers. They reproduce like bunnies. Oh, an ogre. Oh, I got hit with a trap. <laughs> I got stuck. That's funny. That thing could have messed us up if it didn't get stuck. <laughs> Ogres are kunari. Kunari are larger than regular humans, so they're going to be larger darkspawn. How come I'm not discovering these traps ahead of time? These birds are elaborate. They've been abandoned by the dwarves for a thousand years or so, so they're in terrible disrepair in a lot of cases. Lava! Or magma, I guess, it's underground. All set. Oh shit! Ah, dragon! Okay, let's get more serious. Ba ba ba. A lot of enemies clustered together. It gives me the chance to do some hellish things here. Eh, nothing out of him, I guess. Run, Hawk! Run. Oh, you've been healed. Dragons also live in the deep roads. Now, dragons can be infected by the blight, but uh, for the most part, they don't have a whole shit ton of fear from the dark spawn themselves. So, they generally live without being too affected by them. Now, this is just a regular dragon, and all the, the winged dragons, at least, are females. Uh, it's not a high dragon. It may be fully grown, but it's not one of the largest species of them. So uh, the high dragons, or or so, are much bigger and they're much more dangerous. Like the old gods that you saw, in, as the arch demons and stuff, are even bigger than these guys. And them some bitches, they're terrifying. One of them showed up, we'd be dead. They love their statues. I don't know if these, in particular, are examples of them or not, but the dwarves have a habit of building statues to honor things that are uh, dwarves who are essentially considered to be like saints to them. They call them paragons. I don't know if they consider them like... Ah, uh, hold on. Ah, here we go. This goes right where we want it to. Let's go back and tell Bartrand. He'll be so pleased. Bartrand, we found a way around your damned cave-in. It's about time. Let's move out! 